an angle where we dive into the heart of the matter. Today we'll look into the situation in Israel, a global phenomenon that captured the world's attention. Today, we'll bring you the latest on the Israeli war and its profound impact. Stay tuned as we uncover the highlights of this conflict and explore the critical role intelligence played in shaping the course of this war. And as always, we have Barrister Austin Manta joining us. As some of you may know, Barrister Austin Manta is the principal partner of AA Manta & Co. He has been in the field for over 38 years. Join us, let's journey through these complex issues together. Hello viewers, once again, I welcome you to Oweleke TV, and this is Jibrin Angu. I am here today with our regular guest, Barrister Austin Manta. He is the principal partner of AA Manta & Co. He's a legal uh, practitioner who have been in legal practice for um, over three decades, to be precise, about 38 years or more right now. So um, he is um, um, an erudite um, lawyer. Um, we shall be discussing today about the situation in Israel, um, also known, which can be called, referred to as the Israeli war. Um, the truth is, we all know it's a global phenomenon at the moment. It's um it's in the public domain that um you uh, Israel is in a war. They are basically in a war. Um, for the past uh, this is a uh, say for the for the past fifty years, this should be the first time. Um, the president, uh, the prime minister of Israel, will uh call what will all we generally make refer to as terrorism as a war, um, uh, in, engaging in a war with uh, terrorist, terrorist uh, actors. Um, so uh, today we have some highlights to be that we'll be discussing on. We'll be talking, we'll be talking about uh, with uh, Barista Manta, we'll be discussing about the role of, the role the intelligence played in this war um we all know okay let me summarize um the incident in the, uh, that took place in israel uh last week so by a week now about eight or nine days right that was um yeah about eight days now last week saturday we all know what happened where um, hamas operators invaded u.s that, in fact what they did was unprecedented okay i wouldn't say unprecedented but at least for the past 50 years since the war since um, the Israeli war, they, they think, I think I'll, I'll consider it an unprecedented situation where Hamas operatives detail, uh, called, I, well, terrorists, it's, it's an, to me, um, it's not um, an evil name enough. It's not enough, actually, to, because these people, um, uh, the worst of name is what should be labeled them. Because what they did, the heinous acts of inhumanity they perpetrated uh, last Saturday on on Israel is, Israelites was um, something. It is it's something that it's 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 something that words can really really not describe. Um, they went into homes, um, people sleeping, families, children, men, women, wives, husbands, dragged them out, um, raped them, raped um, the women. Um, slaughtered the children, slaughtered human beings. Um, some of them, after raping, they burnt them to they burnt them alive. Um, so many. In fact, it was. Um, it is not something one. Uh, the videos are there, but um, it is not something I would, I would advise anyone to watch, especially if you. Excuse me for those of you who cannot contain, um, the gruesomeness of, of the act. The thing is, um, they did a whole lot of this. Is I don't know. It was well coordinated. Um, obviously, Hamas couldn't have done this on their own. Um, they did it with the collaboration of, um, with the support of uh, other key players that we'll be discussing about. Um, so that is the situation right now. And uh, after that, um, Israel, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu declared um, um, war. Um, declared war against um, Hamas and um, declared the state of Israel 
at war. Um, so we'll be talking about the intelligence, the failure of the intelligence. Um, again, this is unprecedented um, with Israel, especially Israel. Israel has the best, what they call Mossad, they have the best intelligence. Uh, in fact, sometimes I consider them, their intelligence even better than US. They have the US consult when it comes to intelligence, they, they share intelligence with US, US consult them on this. They are real pros, they are the best in the world. That's what I that's me, my own opinion. Going by their the indices, going by their antecedents, they are the best in the world. Mossad can can get anyone wherever they are from any point. A sort of so um the it is it is it is telling, highly telling that this same um best in the world intelligence or uh, institution um failed in the most in the in the most important um uh, time that they needed to be up and doing. Um, that is it. Then they will be discussing the role of the US. What role did the US play in all this, especially in the intelligence failure? Um, that is it. Then um, the role of the media as well. We'll be talking about the, the role of the media, what is happening since after the, since, um, after the attack on Israel, um, what has been the role of the media? Um, we'll be talking about that as well. Um, the role of the region, the regional role. And um, we'll also be talking about the regional role. Why did this whole thing happen? Why did the attack happen? Why now? And uh, what is actually the purpose of this attack? What is the what would be the benefit bene, bene, benefiting factor from as a result of this attack to the region, the regional powers? Um in the Middle East. Um, then the last is the role of the beneficiaries. Obviously, some people, people benefited from this. People are benefiting. People benefited and people are still benefiting and people will continue to benefit even more as long as the war tarries. It's sort of, so um, we'll be discussing all this. And, um, so stay with us. Um, you are obviously get, going to get some details and insightful details at, at that. Um, with Barrister A. A. Manta, who is a political and legal analyst and very, very good at that. Um, so uh, before we start, uh, permit me to once again introduce myself and the channel to you. This is Oweleke TV. We are um, coming to you on Jibrin Angle. That is the name of this show. This show is called Jibrin Angle. And I, for now, I am the sole um, anchor or presenter of this um, of this angle. My name is Jibrin. Um, and um, please um, subscribe to our channel, YouTube channel. We are on YouTube. We are on Facebook. We are on Instagram. We are on uh, X. And um, our website is um, www oweleke.tv, go to where you get to our website, you can find details of um, who we are and where we are coming from. Um, thank you so much. Once again, viewers, uh, my name is Jibrin, and uh, this is Jibrin Angle. We are discussing, uh, we shall be discussing about the current events taking place in Israel as regard to the war. Um, so that is it. Um, Barista A. A. Manta, can you please um can we talk about um the role of intelligence? What happened? What do you think was the cause of the failure of intelligence um um in the in Israel? What happened? Israel is um just like you say one of the best. Me, I I, I consider it the best of intelligence. So what is ha what happened? What is the problem? Could it be a move? A mole in 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 the intelligence or in the intelligence institution. Um, the is it is it is it is it uh, good well, well good to say that uh, that uh, we are we am I right to say to suggest that there there is actual this is this is this is actually an insider job or a just um, failure of the system, uh, innocent failure of the system. So what is it? What what can you call this? in your own judgment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jibrin. 
before I go into that, I want to give our viewers an overview, a background of the place, the land we are talking about. Um, this place we, is normally called the land of Israel or the Holy Land. Is the land that stretches from River Jordan to the Mediterranean Sea and is strategically located between three continents, Africa, Asia, and Europe. And it has a tumultuous history as a crossroads of religion, culture, commerce, and politics. It has been controlled from history by many kingdoms, Egypt, the ancient Israel and Judah, the Persian Empire, Alexander the Great, the Roman Empire, the Muslim Caliphates, and then the Ottoman Empire, before it came into the British mandate by the League of Nations. Now, Israel as a country is reputed to have one of the best intelligence agencies in the world, the Mossad. And the Gaza Strip that we are talking about is a very narrow and small uh, strip, about 25 kilometers by 10 kilometers. And we have about 2.4 million people, 2.2, 2.4 million people living in that small enclave. It is said to be the most densely populated uh, real estate on earth. Now, it is well known that Israel has mapped the whole Gaza Strip with an intelligence grid, street by street, meter by meter. In addition to that, they have human intelligence throughout Gaza. Then when you come to the technological means, the border between Israel and uh, Gaza, all manner of technological um, gadgets, cameras and everything are on the wall and the drones constantly patrol. So this uh, catastrophic failure of intelligence in trying to identify and recognize the threat posed by, uh, I mean, the current uh, attack by Hamas has taken everybody by surprise. And the question is, what happened? How can this thing have happened without the vast and extensive uh, apparatus of the Mossad not knowing about it? Uh, recent news has that on a review of uh, satellite imagery, there were about six training camps that uh, Hamas established in Gaza for this particular operation in the past two years. One of them is said to be just about 750 meters from the border, from the wall, and one of the most um, secure uh, uh, places, a uh, uh, gateway into Gaza. And the imagery shows that in the past one year, some of those uh, training camps have even expanded where Hamas was conducting his training of gliding into Israel and of using other means. So when you factor all these things, you ask, how can this go on for one or two years without Israeli human intelligence a human a Israeli technology becoming aware of it. And then by extension, the US uh, uh, security apparatus both monitor what happened in the Middle East on an extensive scale. Now to say that the Mossad failed and the American intelligence also failed is what we are yet to know the inquiry will be out 
but already there are a lot of uh, theories that are out there by a lot of commentators. Some of them are that perhaps it is a way that Netanyahu wanted to use to finally deal with Hamas. You know, this back and forth has, between Israel and Hamas has been going on since 2007, when Hamas uh, became the dominant force in Gaza. They will infiltrate into Israel, kill or capture one or two people, go back. And because they know that the Israeli love life and they do not abandon anybody, they will do anything to rescue or save even one single hostage. I'll give you an instance of an Israeli uh, soldier, just a private. It took them five years yes. to negotiate his release and 1,000 and almost 1,200 really? Palestinian Business. prisoners were released in exchange for that one private. So when you know that your enemy has that uh, love of life, and that if you can kidnap some people, you will have a bargaining chip. You will do it again and again. And Hamas has been doing that uh, over the past 14 or 16 years. And on top of that, they have been building an arsenal. This is well known to Israel. They have been building an arsenal of rockets, which um, uh, over time, they are trying to enhance the quality of the rockets. I mean, the rockets. And uh, uh, also attach precision equipment to the rockets. The rockets. Israeli intelligence is aware of this. They have estimated the number of uh, rockets held by Hamas at uh, several thousands. They know all these things. And still we come back to the question, how could this have happened without them? So some people have had the guess that perhaps Netanyahu wanted an opportunity to deal a final blow to Hamas. Others have had further the guess or are even making the commentary, taking everything back to the globalization advocates. I just read an article that, look, what is happening now is part of the globalist uh, conspiracy and agenda. And they give an excuse or an example that, look, they tried it with the COVID and it failed. They tried it with the Ukraine-Russia war, and they didn't get the result that they wanted. Now they are trying it with this because of the capacity and potential for the war to expand, to become a regional war, and even a world war, where the globalists will emerge. So all these uh, theories are out there. Now, you have to understand that this operation by Hamas took place in some places over 17 hours without Israeli army coming to the rescue of its citizens. So you can imagine uh, Hamas bulldozers pulling down the gates, Hamas gliders flying and entering into Israeli territory and conducting operations for more than 10 hours without the Israeli army coming to respond. So this thing, it gives a lot of room that maybe somebody decided to turn a blind eye, believing that in the usual way that things used to happen, maybe Hamas would just come and kidnap one or two or three people and do just a small exercise. Because if you, if you listen, you find that Hamas itself was surprised by the extent of the success that they achieved. They did not believe that 
they will come and meet um, uh, an empty place where they can operate without challenge by the Israeli army. So they wanted to do something that they used to do before, take as many uh, hostages as they can, cause as many uh, problems. But the extent to which they succeeded surpassed their planning from the reports that we are hearing. Again, recent uh, reports say that the US intelligence community analyzing intelligence from Israel began to notice the heightened activity of, uh, of Hamas. And they alerted the Israeli uh, uh, intelligence. Again, there are reports that Egyptian intelligence alerted Israeli intelligence three days before the attack by Hamas. Now, if all this thing are, if all these uh, are true, then you will wonder why no action was taken. Then you can bring into focus some of these uh, theories that I have outlined uh, I have outlined above. Yeah, honestly, to add to all this, your all these conjectures and theories, um, another new revelation is um, not really, not really, relatively new, but I think okay, the past forty eight hours just came out that um, um, the stock of um, industrial military industrial complex that is um, companies that manufactures them. Um, I think about four of them in the U.S. Major of them, major four. We have four major. US um, military manufacturing companies here. Yeah. Their stock rose, um, suddenly rose few days to this war, uh, to this attack. So, um, and the worst part is that the Congress members, that is House of Representatives and the Senate, Congress members generally, um, they notice a hike in purchase of the stock of this military uh, military company, uh, military wear, hardware for manufacturing companies, their stock that um, so many of the Congress men and women bought their stock because they are, they, they, which uh, the stock rose suddenly started rising before prior to this war. Um, so it brings us to this whole suspicion, whatever theory you call it, that um, the system they know both in the US, both in the US and the, in the, in Israel, they actually knew that this attack was coming, and it was it is not issue of actually um, bad egg in the system. It is issue of the powers that be who are uh, who actually want who seem in my own um, thoughts who seem to really wanted this to happen. We'll be talking about the intentions, the possible intentions why <laughs> such things. Uh, could have been allowed to take place. Um, the truth is, Congress. Now, let me give you um, just you may, as you may know, um, the Congress are privy to security um, security um, updates. These are they are the 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 security or institutions give them updates of everything, intelligence reports. Uh, I think um, periodically. So they know if, uh, most of some, if not most, of the Congress, depending on the committee that you belong in the in the Congress, um, they are pre privy to very important and sensitive intelligent informations. So um, one will see that will suspect. Not even so. This is a clear thought, thought a clear um, uh, act that um, the Congress they knew. Prior, because like I said, prior to this attack, the stock of uh, the uh, weapon manufacturing companies suddenly went up. Hence, the Congress men and women bought stock few days to this attack. So obviously, someone knew something. People knew this was coming because when whenever there is a war, the stock of uh, the, the shares, the, the gains of this manufacturing companies, hardware, war hardware manufacturing companies actually um, uh, goes up astronomically. So that is when they make their real money. Uh, that we'll be talking, discussing in details about that 
when you come when we get to the beneficiaries of this war. Um, so that let is just, me add, that, um, let me add let me add the point. Yes, that you know they are calling this uh, attack uh, the nine eleven of Israel or the Pearl Harbor. Yes, of Israel. If you remember the Pearl Harbor uh, incident in which the whole American Navy base yes. uh, we're, was, we're sunk. sunk yeah, it was by sunk. Japan. Now, the British intelligence had full knowledge of the impending attack, but they refrained from alerting the Americans because they wanted to draw America into the war. At that time, America had not joined the war yes. against Japan and Germany. It was the attack on Pearl Harbor that brought the U.S. with its vast uh, uh, resources into the war on the Allied side and ended up keeping the balance of the Second World War. So there are theories, like I told you about the globalists, that I have tried with the COVID, have tried with the Ukraine war. They want America to enter into a war at all costs for their own uh, for their own reasons. These are theories that are out there. So it comes down to the fact that some allied intelligence agencies must have known of this attack, but either kept quiet, turned a blind eye, or refused to alert the Israelis. And even the Israeli intelligence agency, nobody is yet to believe that they did not know about this. Because it's not just something that happened in a week. It's yeah. something that was the planned, planned almost, yes. almost two years. So how is it possible? The whole Gaza has been put on a grid, intelligence grid, street by street by Mossad. So how is it possible for them not to know that this thing was coming? Actually, the planning, they said this specific, this particular incident was planned, I think, about a couple of months. That's just, it's, um, I don't know where you got that, that report of two years plan. I think this one, this was a sudden thing that just came up um, and they said that the meetings were held in in in, uh, in um, Lebanon, let me, actually. Let me, let me correct you. <laughs> yes. The CNN review satellite imagery for the past two years. And I said, I mentioned that they saw six training camps for this particular uh, attack, attack over a period of two years. And they, from the satellite imagery that they reviewed over the past two years, one of the main sites was even located just 750 meters to the border with, uh, with Israel where these people were practicing and conducting, uh, uh, practicing to conduct this raid. No, yeah, yeah, Barista. But the thing is, this, these camps have been existing. These are the camps that they used to plan against, they always used to plan it. So these are not like, these camps were actually made, created for this particular purpose. That report you got on uh, uh, CNN, CNN is never, can never be a, a, um, a, 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 a a, a source of genuine, let me be frank with you, because um, they have very, very abysmal, very bad image when it comes to especially in the U.S. So, to you, you, uh, quoting US, uh, CNN for, uh, um, uh, with an information is not a good, it's not a good footing for anyone. That's just the truth. So the truth is, those camps you're talking about were actually, have been in existence. And that is the camp that Hamas have always used. Those are the camps that Hamas, Hamas have always used to perpetrate heinous acts against Israel. Go, like you say, kidnap, go in, uh, kidnap, um, send rockets, uh, missiles into the, uh, into um, Satan Israel, and that stuff or whatever. So it is those, that, that's the, the real report says that this particular incident, this particular attack, it's not, it didn't, it's not an old stuff. It's something that was, I think about some few months, uh, sort of few months old, and they even detailed the 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 locations, the meeting locations, the place they had the play location they had the series of meetings. That was in Lebanon or whatever. So, however, the another angle to it is this Egypt of a thing. It's it is not about just US. 
It's about Israel. Israel, this, like, like you alluded earlier, <laughs> excuse me, Israel can never, this, this, uh, they, me, I categorize them not just one of the best, as one of the best intelligence in the world, but I see them, I consider them the best. That's not the truth. Um, it is not possible for such thing to happen under their nose. Do you know what it means to actually um, breach U.S. Secure, security, breach the, the border, uh, uh, invaded, um, invaded military formations, for God's sake, took over military tanks and killed military personnel, including a general, for God's sake, a serving general. Okay, I, I think he was not killed, he was kidnapped and humiliated. He was almost stripped naked, a sort of. So um, this is, it, it, it is basically, it is impossible for someone to tell me that um, this was an innocent mistake, intelligent oversight. Absolutely, I will never accept that. So it was a deliberate thing. Man, well, on the issue of uh, Netanyahu wanted to use this as a, I mean, not that to me, it doesn't, wouldn't make that much sense to me because um, for Netanyahu to say, to um, desire to allow such thing to happen just for the purpose of annihilating Hamas, um, that is, there is, there are so many ways that he, that could have not through this or whatever. And um, so the thing is, the intelligence they failed, U.S. failed, um, Israel, uh, Israeli intelligence, uh, intelligence failed. And in my own opinion, based on all these conjectures, suspicions here and there, based on circumstantial evidences here and there, um, it is obvious that. Um, it is. It wasn't an innocent failure of intelligence. It was a deliberate failure. Um, whether they expected it to be to to um, get to this level, that is is arguable. Um, but the truth is, they knew this was coming. Like I said, I quoted earlier, the Congress. What? Why would the Congress just suddenly? They they are they they are used to so, similar situation happen, but not on the area of war. It happened in the past, in the recent past, with this Congress, when there is something, they, they always get an insight of something uh, that, that is, 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 was, or is about to happen. Hence, they just go into stock market and start buying stock because um, they already had an insight that such thing will happen. This is the same thing that happened. Someone obviously knew that this thing was, such thing was coming, a sort of. So for them to just suddenly start buying stock and the stock to rise, for just no reason, stock don't drive for any stock. When it comes to um, uh, the, um, 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 uh, 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 stock, there must be something that stimulates stock, either downward or upward, a sort of. So it's something there must be purple, the reason why stock rises always. That so for the economy, economists will always tell you that it's not stock does not just rise from the blues. Um, so um, that is it. Then. Um, Let's come to the media. I think we've talked about the U.S. involvement or whatever. Like I said, it was a deliberate failure from both the U.S. and why they desire, they wanted. This. There are so many reasons one can adduce, um, can um, adduce to this, um, to the reason why they actually wanted this. So many, so many conspiracies we, we can actually um, add, bring in, uh, put together. Um, however, we may not want to go into that because um, it's very, uh, it's, it could be, it's broad. There are so many, except probably you want to talk about that maybe later. Um, the media, now, um, what is the role of the media in this? Now, the, now that the war, from the, from the point the war um, ensued uh, up to this moment, what is your opinion of the media? Um, the, in your opinion, is the media, are they doing the right thing? Or they are, um, you notice um, bias in the coverage? Well, the, the media has only one role, to report the truth. Any other thing other than the truth is what they add to it. But their primary and only role is to report what is happening as it is happening, without bias, without addendums, without additions, or slanting. 
but it is virtually impossible in the conduct of human affairs today to have media that has no, uh, in other words, each media has its own biases. If you see the way Western media report, if you see the way other medias like Al Jazeera and other ones report, everybody is reporting from the slant of his uh, own bias. And as in some cases, uh, there is an incident where the Prime Minister of Britain has castigated the B uh, BBC because they have refused to call the Hamas people terrorists. They are insisting on calling them militants. And the prime minister himself came out to say, look, these people are terrorists. Why do you persist in calling yeah, them militants? That is it. And BBC has talked to their, to their tone that the Hamas people are militants. So some of these media, you know, both the liberal and conservative media, and the slant that they bring to bear on virtually both national and international um, issues. That is the same way the media uh, is portraying this thing. If you go to American media, like the CNN, which is a liberal media with a, li a liberal government, they are detecting or pre uh, presenting what the government of the US wants them to present. Just now, I read that there is a memo from uh, uh, the US uh, government to its operatives in the way they will categorize their reporting. They are to refrain from using the word ceasefire or <laughs> some words that. Um, the same thing happened there. The same thing happened in Canada. Yes, they, are, they, they have given them uh, directives that look, stop using the word ceasefire, stop using the word calm, stop using all this, uh, this thing. So you see the Biden administration has come out uh, openly in support of Israel. So they, they are whipping their media to tell their, to their line. But if you follow uh, the Middle Eastern media, they are reporting it from the point of view of uh, sympathy for Hamas and by extension sympathy for the Palestinians. Even where they condemn the, the massacre, you will see it clearly that they must add the, the, the slant that in any case, these people are being pushed to do this. So that is the way the media is reporting. The, only thing is that for an average listener, you do not swallow hook, line, and sinker. What you hear from the media, you try to exercise your judgment and put uh, everything one and two together. You try to understand the history of the conflict, where it has been coming from, where it is now, and its probable uh, course in the future. Um. The thing is, um, <clears throat> the media. I, I think I, I, I have a slight disagreement with you in this regard. The U.S. media is ninety percent liberal, then ninety percent supporting Palestine or Hamas. Look, it's been it's been very very rough. In fact, some of them don't even hide it anymore. They have we have university students um some um media personalities coming out plainly including in the u.s congress we have three they call them squad members um there are about four of them um who are on unapologetically and publicly um the enemies of israel um we have this this very this um, um criminal lady who is uh, omar from somalia and um, who was a refugee, and incidentally, she her story is an epitome of what U.S. the what U.S. can actually do to for some for to someone's life. Someone who was originally was a ref, she was a refugee from war zone, hopeless, came into this country, and she eventually she married her own brother, 
her own blood brother, the same mother, the same father, to, to get papers. In fact, that has come because probably she's uh, she's 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 a prop up by the powers that be. They've not been able to criticize uh, to prosecute her in this regard. She married. This is a crime, serious crime. She married married her own bro blood brother for the purpose of legitimacy of stay in this country, and so to get for the purpose of green card, and so So it is it is a public knowledge. It is not something secret anymore. Um, uh, 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 media organizations have run documentaries and reports on this. Um, lawyers have discussed about the implication, legal implications. So it's a clear some that's the issue of um, double um, uh, standard in justice system in the U.S. right now. So um, this is the same person, the same lady that is, she is one of the squad members who are against. She has publicly and her other colleagues publicly supported Hamas and blamed Israel for the for what Hamas did. So. Um, it's it is it is we are, we are having an overwhelming so, um, um, support uh, of uh, 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 media on the side of uh, Hamas, regrettably, and it applies to global media. It's it is not just about the U.S. or, 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 the, or the Euro. It's a global system. Look, the media, the liberal controls. In my own estimation, ninety percent of the media globally. Including in Nigeria, for God's sake, Arise is what you see. Arise was Arise, um, on Arise. One of the uh, Palestinian uh, representative was interviewed. Was it two days ago? And I watched or whatever. And and I listened to the question from um, uh, Ruben Agbati and the, the other lady there. I can't remember her name. Um, uh, Arise is, is is it can be is me. I consider it as one of the liberal. In fact, because. Um, I've listened to sometimes their comments on on uh, climate change, their comments on um, American uh, uh, politics, and especially Donald Trump. They are well, obviously against Donald <laughs> Trump or whatever. There are comments on on Israel and other stuff or whatever. It is obvious they are liberal, or whatever. So they are in the pocket of the globalists as well. They are in the pockets of um, of, uh, of, uh, of 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 the powers that be. So that is especially that Ruben Agbati. Ruben Agbati is a very, I remember when he was um, featuring on uh, Patito's Gang so many years ago. Um, there is this show, I don't know if you remember the show, Patito's Gang, that was um, uh, anchored, that was, uh, I think, anchored by um, Pato Tommy, uh, sort of. So um, that, that was when I actually knew, uh, because he was a regular, a regular um, is it guest or a presenter uh, on that show. Uh, sort of so I've never ever I've never liked his opinion and whatever so he is a a, a media a, sorry a liberal hack I call him a liberal hack so I don't I don't like him and um for his views actually and so that is just it so they are involved too so it, it, it also involves the Nigerian media Nigerian media is so 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 overwhelmingly one-sided um biased uh, in favor of the powers that be and that the establishment, as the, as uh, people generally call them, is sort of so. And um, like the, like uh, coming back to back to it's the same on the on uh, the same arise. Uh, like I was saying, the the interviewer, this lady on arise to show, it's only a, <clears throat> excuse me. Rufai was Rufai was only the one who even asked something reasonable, something that makes sense, something that can be said to be uh, unbiased. A sort of so, but apart from him, the other lady asked one crazy question. Of um, I don't, I'm trying to, I, I let me paraphrase now. She asked the guest, uh, the Palestinian guest, a question that, um, what has what can he, what uh, has he got to say about the Israeli claim? She she used that word claim, what Israel, Israel claimed Hamas did the attack, Israel claimed Hamas. For God's sake, at this point, who is he talking about claim? Tell me, it's in the public glare, for God's sake. This is no longer a claim. It is no longer any entity, anyone claiming something. It is the reality that everyone has accepted, people see or whatever. Yet, this nonsensical journalist will come on air and, and, and label that, use that word, claim. That was, that was... It, if I just tuned, I, if I, I have I have uh, minimized, I I really really watch Arise TV right now because they are a bunch of hypocrites there, especially that Ruben Abati. 
and so on. So um, it's a general thing. Um, sorry to have deviated. Anyway, not deviated, but we're talking about the media as well. Look, the globe is overwhelmed with media, with, with media, liberal media organizations that are anti-people. They are anti-people. They are enemical to the interest of, of the people, of the masses, and so on. So um, most of them hate Israel as well. Um, they are in support of all these Islamic movements here and there or whatever. So um, I think I disagree with you on that, that uh, US uh, media is, no, US media is overwhelmingly, I am I'm telling you with authority that they are, it is not even a hidden thing. They don't even hide it anymore. They are overwhelmingly, including their universities, their institutions, their academic institutions, et cetera. So it is not, um, it, and Israel is really, really, it's, it's not a new thing in the world. It has been there from the Bible days. Is, Israel has always been hated by the majority. And so that is, that is just it. Um, so we move to the uh, next, um, the next um, uh, point uh, on, on our list, which is uh, the regional interest. Um, uh, Barista, what do you think is, what do you think, what or who do you think is or are the regional interest in this matter, and what is their, what could be their interest, what could be their their goal, <laughs> or such? Well, um, the uh, regional interest, virtually all the uh, Arab countries surrounding Israel have interest in what goes on Lebanon. Syria, Jordan, you know, have already uh, do have a peace treaty with Israel, as well as Egypt from the Camp David uh, Accords of 1973. But of all this, Lebanon and Syria, the main brain behind it is uh, Iran, who have made uh, no pretense of their desire to see Israel destroyed totally. And you know, for a long time, the demonstration phrase that has been used is from, from the river to the sea. If you saw some protesters, uh, pro-Palestinian protesters in uh, even in US, they have banners showing from the river to the sea. It has always been the catchphrase that we want to drive Israel from the River Jordan to the to the sea, and Iran has demonstrated. You remember the Ayatollah has said on occasion that if they have a nuclear weapon, they will they will use it to destroy Israel. Israel is only one, and if Israel go and they or they are able to destroy one Arab country, there will still be other Arab countries. That is his, that was his rationalization. And they support Hamas, they support um, Hezbollah, they found them, they give them training, they uh, provide weapons to them. And uh, Iran has tried to cycle Israel with all these um, proxies in this war. It knows that it cannot directly fight or threaten Israel. But using proxies who are Palestinians, in, in uh, Gaza, in uh, West Bank, and the uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon. They can always, uh, like now, they denied any responsibility in the planning and the uh, conduct of the attack on uh, Israel. But the whole world knows that they are the ones funding Hamas, they are the ones offering training, they are the ones offering weapons to Hamas. So these regional uh, powers have interest in what is happening. Again, if you look at Saudi Arabia, you realize that Saudi Arabia was on the verge of concluding a peace treaty with Israel. In fact, yeah. it was to happen the week after the uh, the attack, the Hamas attack, took place. And it has been a cardinal principle of Iran to block any Arab country from normalizing relations with uh, Israel. Israel. So 
So some, some, some have speculated that this attack was meant to truncate uh, the normalization uh, efforts between Israel and Saudi Arabia. And to that extent, they have achieved it because Saudi Arabia has put that, uh, that thing on hold for now. But if it had not happened, probably now there would have been a, a, a rapprochement between Israel and Egypt, an exchange of ambassadors, transit rights, and others. So you see, even Saudi Arabia as it stands also now have interest in what is happening in, in, uh, in Israel and uh, Gaza and Lebanon and the West Bank. But the dominant power behind all these things is uh, Iran. Iran. All right. Um, yes, uh, just, just like you said, that was, in fact, um, one of the reasons behind this attack or sponsoring this attack um, by Iran is um, this the, what you just mentioned last, this issue of a uh, peace treaty with uh, uh, between Israel and the Saudis. Um, it was, we were almost um, at the concluding stage um, of, uh, of this treaty when this thing happened. So um, Iran, it, uh, that would have been a nightmare to them. Uh, so that hence they, they sponsored this uh, um, act to truncate that, which just like it said, noted, they have eventually succeeded in doing it, uh, sort of. So um, this is this is again, this is this is um, Joe Biden's America. Um, for the past two years um, and above, uh, over three years, uh, heading almost three years now, of Joe Biden's government, um, the entire world is going is going. We are edging gradually towards world war. Um, he came in, and all of a sudden, war started. Uh, from uh, um, in Ukraine, between Ukraine and Russia, or whatever. Uh, during the Trump uh, era, it was world of peace. There was peace everywhere, all of globally, or whatever. So, in fact, he was the one who actually masterminded the peace, um, the pre peace treaty between Israel and the, uh, um, Israel and Saudi Arabia that was to be um, um, formally um, established in a couple of weeks. Or before this, uh, uh, this, uh, this war truncated it, a sort of he did something. So many unprecedented things in the Middle East brought Bahrain and the uh, United Arab Emirates. He actually spearheaded the, the peace uh, treaty between um, Bahrain and the uh, United Arab area between uh, Bahrain, United Arab Emirates, and Israel. For God's sake. For the first time not in the only, history, uh, not only Bahrain, he, he brought what is called the Abraham Accord. Abraham Accord, that's and the point. Under the Abraham Accord, uh, Sudan, Morocco, Tunisia, okay. UAE, yeah, absolutely. Bahrain, yeah. they all um, uh, signed up to it. You and are... Saudi Arabia was to be the, the next one, next one. To, to, to sign yeah. up to the Abraham Accord. Yeah, you are absolutely right. So that is the point, for God's sake. This is the man of peace. This is the man, the true person, the true man that was that deserved to be given the uh, Nobel Prize, uh, Peace Prize. Uh, honestly, he he didn't get it because, like I said earlier, the the, the global establishment who are after um, one world order, um, a sort of they are they are uh, unapologetically and aggressively against him. So that is why. Otherwise, this man throughout throughout his four years. There was peace in the world. He made peace. He created peace. Made peace with, um, instead of um, 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 a kind of um, instituted um, channels of peace with several countries. I've forgotten these other two countries that were for for so several decades that were at each other's uh, throat. Um, there are these two. I forgot the name of these two countries. That Donald Trump was the only one who achieved who brought these two countries together. They are neighbors. Oh my God! What um what are these countries' names? The both presidents they eventually visited White House. That was where they signed that they signed the peace document. For God's sake, this man is just a man that uh, that that is that that was the he was his presidency was the best for the world for the U.S. and for the world. Yet they are uh, just uh, let um, me add um, let me add the point. Yes, but contrary to the propaganda that these Arab states that. Uh, 
had a rapprochement with Israel. We are selling out the cause of the Palestinians. That was not true. There was an underlying benefit for the settlement of the issue between uh, Israel and the Palestinians. All the Arab countries that had the agreement that Abraham assigned onto the Abraham Accord stipulate, made a stipulation for the settlement of the Palestinian issue. The whole overall aim was if a whole majority of Arab countries have a rapprochement with Israel and end up isolating the extremist elements, it will be possible eventually to, to have a, a two-state two two yeah, solution. Because yeah. the actual person that is blocking the two-state solution are the extremist groups like uh, yes. Hezbollah and Hamas, Hamas, whose intention is not to live peacefully with Israel. Absolutely not. Whose intention is rather to drive Israel from the river yes. to the sea. So over time, the Donald Trump came with this plan that, look, let's have a majority of other states that want peace so that we can isolate these extremists and they end up uh, achieving this. But Iran, who controls these extreme elements, see that as a challenge to them yeah. because they too do not want any uh, uh, peace with Israel. Yeah. Yeah. Israel, Israel and well. uh, Palestinians. They don't want that. Their aim is to eradicate Israel from that place. So they will not accept that Abraham Accords. And part of what happened is uh, a response to that. Yeah, um, you are very, very correct. And so that is just it. Anyway, um, we are moving to the last point of, uh, of this show, which is um, the beneficiaries. Who are the beneficiaries? We've been talking about the beneficiaries, actually, technically. But uh, who are the true and the real beneficiaries? Um, and they are, um, we call them in the US, they are called uh, um, the military, uh, military uh, industrial complex. That's, that's what they, I think they will, in the US, they have about four major contractors, military contractors. They are the warmongers. They like war. They, they have, uh, they have uh, props in the, in the, in, in, in the National Assembly. Um, in the presidency, they have props everywhere, or whatever. So um, they are the ones, the backers of all this. They are the ones who really desire this war, war in Ukraine, war in the Middle East, the, including global war, because the more war, the more money they make. It's sort of so that is just this whole war of a thing is just about, and that is why they were they were one of one of the hate, worst haters of Donald Trump because Donald Trump. Uh, he, he is that kind of person who he is a, a man who believes in peace through strength. He was spending so much money building the U.S. Army, the U.S. weaponry, um, because he just felt, which is the truth, that makes sense to me, that when the enemies know, when an enemy knows what you have, that what you have to defend yourself is more than what 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 what, what uh, the enemy what, what it's more than what the enemy has. When the enemy knows that, uh, obviously they don't dare you. So. He was actually he the he was of the policy of uh, that of uh, peace through strength, which is very very brilliant, and that was why there was there was peace all over the world, uh, establishing peace with different countries and uh, of the world. The the military industrial com complex, which uh, which uh, can be on uh, which uh, is also known as the military contractors, a sort of they were not they hated him for that. They never liked it, a sort of so. Um, they were sponsors of some of these um, uh, congressmen and women who hates um, who hates uh, Trump um, with passion, for God's sake. Um, so that is just it, um, Barista. Why that is my opinion? What do you think about um, the beneficiaries? Who do you think are the beneficiaries, um, or who is or who are the beneficiaries of this war? You have mentioned the military industrial complex in the US. And I want to add that the economic outlook as of now for the military industrial complex in the US is very rosy. Yeah, that is it. That's the war in Ukraine and now the war in Israel, they that are getting it. contracts upon contracts. Yeah. As they supply uh, weaponry, the inventory goes down. And they get a, a contract. Re, re, restocking, contract yes. Journey. So they are 
their economic outlook is extremely rosy. As we speak, you know they are producing uh, the Iron Dome interceptors in the U.S. Okay. The U.S. is already rushing over two uh, transport planes have already landed in Israel to resupply Israel with the Iron Dome uh, interceptors and other military equipment. So as far as they are concerned from the high uh, rise buildings, they are smiling to the they are bank. smiling, that is the point. They are, they are smiling to the bank. When people are dying. The, the, oh the fact God. that people are dying, women and children honestly, are dying. Honestly, has, it's never uh, has never been the problem of weapon manufacturers. Because if they take that into account, they will not be in business. So they just like a coffee maker, if you say people should not die, the coffee maker will also go out of business. So why people are suffering, they, they are smiling to the bank. Then uh, by, by a stroke of uh, irony, they attack the, the forces opposing uh, Israel, Iran and its uh, project. They can also use it and broadcast a chink in the armor of Israel. The vaunted Israeli intelligence, the vaunted Israeli military, has been overcome by uh, by only Hamas. Uh, Hezbollah is there. Uh, the other people in, in in Syria, in Syria are there. The people in the West Bank are there. So already you can see them uh, uh, promoting some videos that ah, only only Hamas is able to tackle Israel. So if Israel ends up facing war on five fronts, these five fronts, they talk about uh, 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 Lebanon by Hezbollah, West Bank, Syria. <laughs> the, but, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, they, they probably, I don't know, probably someone has forgotten history. Um, the 1970s history where Israel for actually faced five countries if and I, defeated if, them. If I wanted to talk about that because but we don't have time. I wanted to talk about one great propaganda that has driven the Palestinian cause that a lot of people who do not know have also bought into it that the Israel expelled Palestinians from their lands. Correct. You are right. Uh, that is just propaganda. There is nothing like expulsion. Back in 1947, when uh, United Nations Resolution 181 the partition resolution was passed. And Israel, the Arab countries rejected it, and Israel proclaimed its independence in May 1948. Seven Arab countries gathered and uh, said they will wipe out. In fact, that time, Israel were just a few thousand. And they were very, very optimistic. They said that they will uh, chase Israelis to any hole that they enter into and wipe them out. And they gave, as a matter of fact, there were over 750,000 Palestinians in the portion that was given to Israel by, by the United Nations. Now, those people are now outside, most of them, three quarters are outside Israel. And that is the, where the propaganda comes that Israel is spread Palestinians. But the truth is that in the run up to the attack on Israel by several Arab countries, in 1948, they gave warning to all uh, Arabs inside Israel that they should leave. They don't want them to be caught up in the crossfire. And uh, if they don't leave and they submit to Israeli authority, they will be treated as conspirators. And nobody gave chance to Israel to survive. When you had uh, the most powerful Arab countries, Egypt, Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, and all these ones jointly coming to attack a few yes, Israelis in 1948. So most of the Arabs, for instance, if you take Haifa, there were over uh, 70,000 uh, Arabs in Haifa alone. By the threats of these uh, Arab countries, which was aired on the waves, that live now, we don't want to enter and also destroy you. More than uh, uh, just about 5,000 of them remained. They left, fearing the attack by the Arab country. Unfortunately, the attack came and Israel emerged uh, victorious. 
The only thing they can lay to the charge of Israel is that Israel did not resettle those people that left on their own. In fact, if you read Godamay's uh, memoirs, he said he was sent by Ben Gurion to Haifa to plead with the Arabs to remain. And the Haganah, the Israeli uh, organization, also pleaded with the Arabs to remain, that they will be protected. Israel never wanted to spare anybody. This was the circumstances in which the Arabs that were living in Israel left. Now, one of the key issues in settlement is the right of return of these uh, uh, Palestinians, Palestinians. Left yes. at that time. That is a key issue, but things have passed the stage where you say, okay, let them return. Most of them have become mortal enemies of Israel. So how do you want Israel to allow them to return? So that is one key issue. People in U.S. and other places do not understand what happened, and they continue to say Israel expelled Palestinians from their land. But this is what happened. No, the thing is, um, so many people know um, they are just being mischievous. Um, like I said, Israel um, has been hated from the from the beginning of creation. They've been hated. It's not today. It's 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 it's, it's a destiny, um, and that is just it. People have been have hated them for some people for just no reason. Some by envy, just envy, and sort of and. Um, the envy is that these people are so talented, so blessed with a whole lot of resources, human, capital, natural resources, all manner of resources. Look, there are several indices, several um, evidences to show that these people are really God's, truly God's people. Um, yet people keep keep coming at them at, at, at a very, uh, that is the reason why all this Arab, what do you think Arab, you think what what do you think an, an, an average Arab would be, be the what would you think would be the reason for an average Arab to want to make peace with Israel? It is because of what they would gain from Israel, the resources, human, especially human resources. Uh, human resources they are full of these guys are so intelligent when it comes to uh, tech, um, um, uh, tech uh, 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 genuity, uh, uh, ingenuity. That that they are uh, they are the best in the world. Medicine. Tech, they are the best. These are the things that, uh, that these are the things the Arab nations um, desire to to benefit. That's why, they, of course. Otherwise, uh, averagely, if they are not benefiting anything, they can never, they will never ever talk about having peace with Israel. They will always be at Israel. It's always been like that. It's it's something that has to do with fate. Um, it's, it's something that has to do between be, with uh, um, Abraham's children, between Ishmael and Abraham. So it is it is rooted. In, in 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 a lineage so uh, that that is something that will uh, that is eternal that hatred is eternal so if they are making peace because of what they will benefit from israel when it comes to war apparatus israel has the best or whatever when it comes to things that with the technology what what you think um they are the they, are, they have is uh, us is their best ally for nothing it is because of what is us us is always supporting israel uh, because of it the best brings a lot to the table. Yes, that is the point. And, uh, let, let me also make the yes. point that you see, Saudi Arabia and Iran are mortal enemies. Yes, Saudi Arabia is an Arab nation, Iran is a, is, is a Persian uh, nation, and their Islamic faiths are different. Different, Iran is here, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 Sunni, is, uh, yes, a Sunni. So they are mortal enemies, and they live in fear of the Iran, of Iran's growing power. Yeah. So their approachment with Israel is also a security. Um, yeah. Yeah. Enemy. Games. Yeah. This attack, this attack on Israel has is already being used as a propaganda by Iran. That look, you are running to Israel for protection, but Israel cannot protect itself, even from Hamas. They are already using, they are already using it as a yeah, as a propaganda, propaganda. Uh, weapon against the Arab countries that want to protect themselves from Iran. Yeah, that 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 is just it. So like you said earlier, that's just true. That's my point, that Israel brings it, that, that US, they are not uh, unrepentant um, ally of uh, ally of Israel um, and defender, and, uh, and, uh, defender of, uh, supporter of Israel. They are, they are just, they are doing that for their own personal gain as well. 
Um, so uh, they, they, they are, it's, like you said, Israel is bringing a lot to the table. So they are benefiting so much from Israel on intelligence, on military, on, uh, on so many stuff, on medicine. So many stuff Israel is bringing. In fact, what Israel is bringing to the table far outweighs what U.S. takes is bring, uh, brings to the table. And that is why they are still allied. But they cannot otherwise. Um, even this one that Joe Biden is declaring on flinching, on, 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 on flinching uh, support for Israel. They are just doing it out of, out of duress. It took them four days to come out. U.S., it took Joe Biden and the liberal hacks four days to come out and criticize Hamas. For four days, they were silent. Everybody was hollering, where is Joe Biden? Where are the Democrats? Where are the people in government? What are they saying about this war? It took them four days to eventually come out and then, uh, of course, come out from slumber and uh, decide to, uh, their support is just hypocritical. They do not support Israel inside of them, but behind the scene. They are only doing what is needful politically. They, are, they just decided to do because election is coming up next year. So they are doing it just for political gains. Honestly, they are they, they have to do it for political gains and for probably the military gains, like for the industrial complex. Because industrial complex, they are really, really sponsoring politicians like no man business in this country. So they are the ones propagating this war. They are the warmongers, a sort of. So anyway, I think that will that brings us to the end of this show. Thank you so much, Barry Samantha, as always. Um, thank you for your your knowledge, your broad uh, spectrum of uh, knowledge, and um, that is that I, that is so insightful and so thought provoking, and um, we would have, it really really makes sense to um, to us all. Uh, thank you for the time. Thank you for always giving us um, the, your the, uh, your audience to the audience to actually um, engage engage with you uh, on important issues, global issues, um, and global global and local issues. We appreciate this um, gesture. We are humbled actually to um, to be giving um such 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 attention um again viewers we have been discussing with barrister a a manta he's called austin manta he is the principal partner of um a a manta and co he's a legal practitioner who has been in practice legal practice for over 38 years he may not be a son but he is um he he knows much more than sons. Sons, uh, sons bow to him when it comes to legal, um, when it comes to um, uh, legal jurisprudence. So um, he he knows so much uh, in law. Um, so that is um, he has been very very good um, at what he does. He's um, operating from both Kaduna and Abuja. And um, we are pleased to be associated with him. Barry Samantha, thank you once again. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Yeah, our viewers, um, now we come to the end of the show. Um, this is, again, this is Oweleke TV on Jibrin Angle. Um, uh, we urge you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our, um, uh, follow us on, on, on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and uh, on Instagram, and our website is www.oweleke.tv. This is our that's our website. Go to our website and uh, you will see you know so much. You find out so much about us. Um, all you need to know about us. And um, once again, I'll thank you for if you are a regular um, viewer on our show on this T on, on on the on the channel or on our show. We appreciate your time. We appreciate your encouragement. We appreciate um, your 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 spirit. Actually, um, we thank you for being there for us. And if you are the, if you are non regular, we appeal to you to um, make yourself avail yourself um, all the time and anytime we are either on live uh, show or or uploaded. We will, will uploaded our our content. Um, set on your notification 
subscribe and set on your notifications so that whenever we are on live, or we are go, we are we are live, or we are upload, we uploaded, we are, we are uploading our or our content. Sorry, uh, whenever any of our contents are uploaded, um, you will receive notification. Um, so thank you once again. As um as we call this a day once again, my name is Jibrin on Jibrin uh, on Jibrin Angle. Thank you and God bless you. Bye. Thank you for joining us on this insightful exploration of the Israeli war and its global implications. We hope you've gained a deeper understanding of this complex situation. Stay tuned for more in-depth analysis on current event. Until next time, take care and stay informed.